Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Most of us have seen movies or television shows where sharks have been portrayed as marauders who prey on unsuspecting swimmers or smaller fish in the sea. But many Wild Kingdom episodes illustrate how sharks and other predators are an important part of the food chain in our underwater world. Oceans cover 70% of our planet, yet we still have much to learn about this important ecosystem. Modern technology has enhanced our ability to study the oceans with minimal disruption to their habitat. Human involvement and recent legislation to protect underwater creatures allow for the resurgence of these many species. There's more good news to come in the Wild Kingdom, so sit back and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD-TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Man has always been fascinated by and generally fearful of sharks, such as this nurse shark of Australian waters. People everywhere are interested in seeing these powerful fish, provided they can do so in safety. Recently, we were invited by Marine Land of Australia to help capture some sharks for permanent live display to the public. They had to be caught without being harmed. And since hooks or spears would cause injury, it was decided to try to rope a shark by hand. This meant becoming exposed to what might be some danger by meeting a large shark in its own element, roping it, hanging on to the rope until the shark tired, and then lifting it aboard a boat for transportation to its new home. We embarked on this exciting project from the docks of Marine Land of Australia here at Southport in Queensland. This was a unique project and one that all participants would long remember as we set out to rope a shark. All is in readiness as we arrive at the dock. First to be introduced to my associate Tom Allen, is Dave Duffy, the boat captain for this operation, which is being headed by John Reynolds, director of Marine Land of Australia. The third man is the inventor of the shark roping technique, Bill Hookway, Marine Land's curator of fish. Before we leave, Bill shows how the capture device he designed works. The hoop passes over the shark, and then the rope noose attached to the hoop is pulled tight around the fish. This powerful boat, the Kingfish, will move us swiftly to the offshore location where John and Bill are sure we'll be able to find the gray nurse sharks we're after. The nurse shark of Australian waters is a decidedly dangerous shark and is not of the same species as the American nurse shark, which is mild in temperament. water channel abuts the marine land property, and if we do return with captive sharks, we'll be able to transfer them to holding tanks with a minimum of difficulty. We've been running at full speed for about an hour now, heading generally north, about four miles off the coast. According to Dave, we're nearing the spot where we'll look for sharks. This water is 50 to 80 feet in depth with a lot of coral on the bottom. We're slowing down for our stop now, and this is when the smaller inflatable boat we've been towing will be used. While we've been traveling, the others have been down below getting into their wetsuits for the dive. Now that we've reached our destination, they'll get the small boat readied for use. 
I'll go below and give them a hand in getting underway. John Reynolds and Bill Hookway have found that it's much simpler to work out of the smaller boat when diving for sharks. For one thing, the smaller boat provides greater maneuverability in the event that they don't discover sharks at the first location where they dive. Dave's continuing to scan the surface for sharks as the preparations are completed. Now they'll move off a short way for the dive, and at the same time, we'll stand ready nearby. From the upper lookout platform of the big boat, I'll be able to watch the surface of the water where the dive is taking place, and we'll keep ready to offer any assistance the divers might need. They've gotten into position, and Tom Allen's setting the anchor. That means they'll soon begin their dive. Our air tanks will allow us to stay below for the better part of an hour. Although Bill, checking the capture hoop a final time, is sure we'll encounter sharks long before that. This place where we've anchored is over a channel in the reef where the collectors from marine land have previously observed shark behavior and captured some for exhibition. As always, there is a profound exhilaration at moving deep into the marine world. An aura of peacefulness surrounds us as we enter a veritable garden of coral formations and marine plant life and multitudes of colorful fish which are scarcely disturbed by our alien presence. I'm going to take the lead at John's suggestion in order to closely observe the fish. We're moving toward an area where Marineland scientists have often before seen a variety of shark species, including nurse sharks. But thus far, we've encountered only the smaller reef fish, such as these beautiful specimens, called glassy sweepers. With startling abruptness, there is suddenly a sizable white-tipped shark cruising by. Although sometimes known to be aggressive, the white tip is ordinarily a shark which divers needn't be too concerned about. However, it's not the species we're after. This one's nine or ten feet long and probably weighs about 300 pounds. We're definitely in the shark area now because no sooner does the white tip move on than to the side another appears. It's a more dangerous species, called bronze whaler, or gray reef shark. Since it's quite large, it would be safer for me to be back with the others while it's in the vicinity. Now that we've reached the edge of the region where the sharks seem to be congregating, we'll move deeper into the channel and keep alert or nurse sharks. A bronze whaler and a white tip shark had already been sighted by Tom Allen and the men from Marineland, and now Tom was confident they'd soon be encountering the gray nurse shark. The sense of tranquility we experienced as we first began our dive 
has been replaced by an electric excitement. The knowledge that at any moment a huge shark might appear from out of the dim distance or from behind a coral formation has made us even more expectantly alert. It is Bill Hookway who detects a movement which turns out to be just a large loggerhead turtle. I'm going to take a slight detour toward a massive coral formation while John and Bill remain nearby. At the base of the formation, fairly well camouflaged beneath the sand, is a huge black stingray. They often bury themselves in sand like this when resting. Stingrays are capable of delivering an extremely painful and sometimes even lethal wound with a sharp barbed spear on their tail, but only in defense. When people get stung by stingrays, it's usually because they've accidentally stepped on them, and the instinctive defensive lashing of the ray's tail drives the barbed spear into foot or leg. However, they're not an aggressive animal. The sudden spurt of speed it put on easily leaves me behind. But perhaps I can get close again and observe the unusually graceful swimming action more closely. This ray is close to five feet across the waves and probably nearly a hundred pounds. Beautiful to watch, but sharks are what we're after. There's the first gray nurse. It's close to 10 feet long and too big for our holding tank. But where there's one, there should be others. There's a second one, moving under an unusually large school of three-foot barracudas. One seldom sees a school of barracudas with this many fish in it. shark is about nine feet long, and that's the size we want. Bill and John have seen it too, and they're coming in my direction now. shark is still moving about leisurely in our area and it looks like a very good one to attempt capturing. Bill still has the hoop and John is behind to help in holding the shark once it's been roped. The shark's almost directly below us now. Evidently not in the least apprehensive that we're approaching. The trick in roping such sharks is for Bill to extend the hoop down in front of the fish so that it swims through the opening. Then he pulls the loop tight when the hoop's between the two dorsal fins.
taking their combined strength to hold it. The important thing is not to allow any slack in the rope. If that occurs, the shark can turn and bite the rope in two or slip free of the loosened noose. The frenzy of the shark momentarily makes it grab its own tail while trying to bite free. has slipped. We've lost it. All it took was an instant of slack in the line. All we can do now is re-rig the hoop and hope for greater success with our next effort. Another shark is here, but it's too big for our tank. And there are plenty of others around. So it shouldn't be long until we find one that is ideal. The men weren't discouraged by the loss of the nurse shark they'd roped and immediately set out to find another. The nurse sharks bear their young alive and Bill Hookway believes they come to this particular area for that purpose. Again, we continue to move along in search of an eight-footer and pass through large schools of small fish. These are mostly ruddy merwans, but here and there among them are some creval jacks. just as we move into a slightly deeper area that we encounter another gray nurse shark. This one's a little over eight feet long and probably close to 200 pounds. Bill indicates he's going to try for this one. is suddenly struggling much less and seems exhausted. This could cause slack to occur and increases the possibility of the noose loosening. I'm going to move down to check it out while Bill tries to hold the rope taut. Fortunately, the noose is still snugged tight and I've picked up the trailing end in case my weight is needed on it. The Australians also call this species the ragged tooth shark, and with good reason. Although it's not struggling at the moment, this shark's still far from being subdued.
This species of shark has been observed swallowing air, which is believed to serve as ballast. And when exhausted enough, the shark will belch out that air from its stomach. Earlier, Bill said that to bring it to the surface before its air is released would cause it to suffer a form of the bends. There, the air is expelled. There'll probably be no more struggle from this shark. The men can now bring their exhausted but otherwise unharmed captive to the surface, where it will quickly recover in the holding tank. In American waters, this shark is called the Atlantic Sand Tiger Shark, and very justifiably, with teeth such as this one has. The difficult part of the job is finished. We'll keep the shark suspended just below us until the big boat arrives. Now that the divers have returned to the surface and are getting into their boat, Dave will take us back to them. Then we can transfer the shark they've roped into the saltwater holding tank on board this boat. Within an hour or so, the shark will be moving about freely in marine land of Australia's spacious saltwater tank, which will thereafter be its permanent home. This has been an entirely successful operation, and none of us will ever forget the time when we set out to rope a shark. The large Australian nurse shark was just one of several sharks we roped and brought uninjured into captivity. Each shark was carefully lifted into the boat and kept alive in a special narrow tank until we returned with it to marine land of Australia. There can be no doubt that sharks are fascinating fish, unpredictable and sometimes dangerous. Yet this should not be used as a justification to destroy them. As with other predatory animals, the sharks have a distinct and necessary role in the ecology of the ocean. To kill them indiscriminately or to endeavor to wholly exterminate them could well be highly detrimental to the balance of nature in the marine portion of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.